we've got Wayne on the show today from Ace Gus. Dude, how are you doing? Man? I'm good, thanks. And you, Joe? Good, good. I haven't seen you since before lockdown. Man. Yeah, no, it's been a bit rough, eh? I mean, we were closed for the full period of lockdown, opened again on the 1st of June. So um, things trying to catch up on backlog. Uh, we've been quite relatively busy since uh, we got back to work. So can't really complain, even though obviously the situation in the country is not great. We have been very fortunate. I, I've been amazed. I mean, look, obviously I, I, you, you're getting horror stories from, from everywhere. Um, but then I, 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 I'm talking to a bunch of guys and they're all busy. I mean, I, I was talking to the guys, uh, Mark from Rocket 88 um, engine. He's like, he's uh, one of his best months ever. Um, I mean, that's, yeah, a, that's a high item. You know? That's not even a cheap item. Yeah, I know for sure. I mean, I, I was also very surprised. I thought after lockdown, we were definitely going to be dead quiet. I mean, the beginning of 2020 for us was actually very slow. We, we, we had our big projects going on, but as far as the smaller stuff, the, the day-to-day -day audio systems and interiors and that kind of thing, we actually had very little. The workshop was quite quiet and other than the big ongoing projects. So I thought after lockdown, um, we were going to be dead quiet, but by the same token, shortly before lockdown, I implemented some new Google AdWords advertising, and I think that's just helping us to get uh, our name out there a bit more and people to sort of find us a bit easier than just, because previously we've only really done Facebook, Instagram, and a bit of YouTube. So I think the Google AdWords is definitely helping the situation. People are finding us a bit easier, and hopefully we are, we're able to assist with their requirements and deliver some cool cars and cool upgrades to them and we are able to stay afloat and keep the business going and keep the staff employed and yeah i guess that's the best we can hope for i mean you, you guys have such a diverse shop i mean you guys do a lot of different things we, we had you on rod shop uh, on the tv show and i mean yeah. we, we were talking about the bmw there we we, and we were talking about the race cars and we, we didn't even touch on marinello or what's it the, the, the cobra project the venom the venom, yeah, the venom that you guys are doing. I mean, you guys have so many other projects. Like I said, you're a diverse shop. You're, you, you are yeah, like a one-stop shop. Yeah, yeah so um, we are very lucky to have, um, obviously, uh, Sean and Grant, the two sides of the business, um, Ace Customs and Ace Customs Racing, both of them with extensive um, experience in their area of the business. Sean on the customization side, Grant on the mechanical suspension, setups, race car builds, all that type of thing. So we're very fortunate there. You know, not to sound brash or anything, but there, there really isn't much we can't build. Um, you know, as far as anything from a race car, built chassis. Um, I mean, we're doing that Barracuda project at the moment where we're building that uh, 300C Chrysler drivetrain engine interior. Basically, the whole car, building it into the body of the... And, uh, of the uh, of the okay. 70 Barracuda. So that's a very exciting project. Obviously not something that's really, that I'm aware of that's really been done in the country before. So we're very excited about that project. I think it's going to be really cool when it's done. It's been a bit of a, a little bit of a challenge, but uh, we've got on top of everything so far, uh, making good progress. So yeah, I mean, obviously we built the Marinello from scratch. Uh, that was kind of a nice uh, demonstration of what we really can do. And obviously a lot of, we do the restorations and stuff, but more focused on the resto mod type stuff. We don't really do back to dead standard or um, what do you call it? Um, like that classic, uh, more classic. Yeah, thing. classic type restoration. Concourse. You know, we like, yeah, concourse. That's the word I was looking for. We like to do the, uh, the resto mod stuff, bigger wheels, bigger brakes, bigger engine, fancy interior, audio. That, that's where we like to play. And you know? I think that's our, that's our strength and we should play. So um, obviously we have the capability to do more standard stuff as well, but the the rest of mod stuff is what really excites us. Definitely. And then look, I mean, your interiors that you guys do are just insane. Um, um, you guys have been working with Rock and Fastgate and on that side with your your um, and the guys from in the US, if I'm not mistaken, um, it's Brian and them that we've actually had on the show. Yes, yes, yeah. Sean's had training several times. Brian. Uh, uh, for guys, so that's been very helpful, obviously, to expand Sean's knowledge, make sure that we're on top of 
what the trends are in the U.S. and overseas and how the guys are doing their routing and the new techniques they're using to build and all that type of thing. So that's been extremely beneficial and we're very grateful for that as well. Definitely important to stay on top of the training. Uh, I must say some of, it's actually been pretty cool. Some of our other suppliers during lockdown and stuff have also got on board with the training on the technical stuff and, and all of that. So it's been really nice to keep the guys busy and able to, even though we weren't working, the guys were able to do a lot of training. Uh, Rockford really pushed through a lot of great training. I know Sean was very pleased with it. And even some of the other suppliers, product training, that type of thing. So it's, it's been good to keep the guys' mind and obviously try and make the best use of the lockdown time and gain some experience and some knowledge. Definitely, definitely. So now, before, besides, so, I mean, obviously you guys are sitting with the Win My Ride project, which yeah. uh, is now starting to kick off. Um, and that is the, the, the E30 uh, 328 that we are busy building with. Uh, Sean and I actually work with uh, Sean, Sean, Wayne and myself, and we're all, all working together on this one for a project called OLE. Um, this is a big wide body giveaway. Uh, so the competition's back up and running now officially. Uh, I mean, it took it, suits still a little bit during lockdown. Um, besides for that one, what else have you guys got in the shop at the moment? Um, uh, uh, the big ongoing projects with that, which I think we're aware of, we've got the Camaro that we're busy with, which is probably now starting. Uh, eighty percent done. The engines in. Uh, we're busy with hiring. We're busy with interior. The all was set up. All the stuff. We had to do a few changes on the on the brake system. Put in a hydraulic handbrake. Um, quite a lot of electronics going into the car. Everything will be controlled with buttons on the center console, electric windows, handbrake, all that type of stuff. Paintwork's done on the car. So um, once we're done with the interior, the car will go back to Ace Customs Racing for initial engine startup and to finalise the um, couple of the we've got a, a, a minor clearance issue on the fenders which we need to just look at camber right and the suspension and ride height set up right actually looking at this morning before you called I was looking at a very cool um, air intake system for the Camaro something I haven't seen previously on uh, many cars it looks really racy and quite cool quite excited to put that on I think it's going to finish the engine bay really nicely that car is going to be really special um, got um, Corbeau seats going in it with harnesses. It's got a half cage, Rockford audio system, so 383 stroke and motor. So it's got uh, customers really gone all out. Um, he's one of our one of our VIP customers. I mean, all our customers are VIPs to us. But he he really um, spends a lot with us, and we're very very grateful for that business from him. Um, I hope that, that car's coming to SA Hot Rod Magazine. Huh? Absolutely, if you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'll do a YouTube video of it as well, and then obviously we'll partner up with you guys to do a feature on it if, you, if you're keen on that. Uh, always, always, very much always, like always. Um, So that that call, I, I think we would have been probably 95 percent done had it been for lockdown. We obviously lockdown killed us a bit, so we've fallen behind on a lot of stuff, and we we've been trying to catch up on cars that were booked during lockdown. So it's been a bit. Uh, Bit of a difficult uh, one to try and get everything done and recover, but we're getting there. And then on the other side, we've obviously got the Barracuda project, which I mentioned. Uh, we're also busy with that other E30 wide body. Uh, that was an E30 existing race car that we took in. Um, the car was already built Lexus back motor, um, but we've pretty much, or we have redone the car completely, including um, body paintwork, the wide body kit, redone the interior. I mean, it's very bare bones. We've done some bronze, done some fabric, cool aluminium. Looks really like a, a fighter jet look or fighter plane look. So that's quite cool. A lot of some new stuff we've done in the engine bay with uh, like plates to cover up areas and just just a bit different to what the way we normally build. But it's come out really nice. A lot of aluminium features in the car. Obviously the Lexus V8 and the same suspension's gone in, but we've got some cool wheels going on it. As you were sourcing tires and getting the wheels widened. Um, so that, that's a cool project. Also going to be very special when it's done. That's done in that Nardo grey, which everyone wants to love. Everyone is people that. loves the colour. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, what else are we that. going on? We've got, uh, we've got a, a car in from a, a good friend of ours and a partner company that does driver training. Um, actually done training with me as well called Infinite Drive SA. That's uh, Christo from there. He does some amazing work with uh, driver training and that type 
on track uh, all, um, on road training as far as defensive driving, anti hijack, all that sort of stuff. So we're actually building a. He bought a 350Z, and we're converting it into a. Well, when I say converting, upgrading it to a training vehicle for track driving and drift experience. So we're putting oh, nice. coilovers in it. We've put put half putting a half cage in it. Put um, two racing seats with harnesses, obviously, just to make sure the safety's up to scratch. Putting the coilovers in so he'll be able to set the car up according to whether he's doing the track uh, experience and training or whether he's doing the drift work. Um, so you're upgrading the brakes so that the car's all really set up for for the track driving and able to withstand that. We've gone with better brake pads, racing brake fluid, all that type of thing, braided lines. So that, that car's going to be really cool. Uh, we'll do a bit of a video on that car, I think, when it's done as well. He's planning a really cool wrap that's going to look nice. Um, so yeah, that's quite an exciting little project. A little bit different to what we normally do. So not the full-on hardcore race car, kind of more of a almost like a track day car. It's kind of nice for people to see, you know, on a on a more limited budget, what can you do to your let's call it daily driver um, to go and pop out to the track, you know, and and have a bit of fun on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon at one of the local tracks. And then a couple of other small projects. I don't know if people would have maybe seen. We did that um, little Fiesta that we converted into like a panel van. I only uh, only posted the video yesterday, but a little bit of something. It just shows like the kind of different stuff we do. We do all kinds of stuff. Uh, she came to us saying that she needs a panel van or a, or a delivery vehicle. Let's rather call it that. And that she just doesn't have the budget now to go and actually buy a van. So we took the back seat up and built a, built a whole paneling setup. That um, with little partitions and stuff, so that uh, she can carry around. Uh, she's in medical waste disposal. Carry around all her goodies and things she needs to to get done. So that came out really nice. Actually, we were a bit unsure. Not something we've done before, but quite cool. And um, so pleased with that. We've also got that beautiful Mustang in that was restored by another gent in uh, Krugersdorp. Beautifully done. We're just doing the audio system and a bit of a center console upgrade, uh, putting in a PMX head unit from Rockford. Obviously, also a full Rockford system. Um, we've also got an Impala in for some basic fixes and a couple of little things to do. And then, yeah, like I said, we've got quite a couple of things. So we've done quite a lot of audio systems lately. We've got a Ranger Raptor coming in for a big audio system in the near future. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, quite a lot going on. And then on our on our internal project side, we've got uh, you know our shop projects because you know we we eat our own dog food. Not only do we build customers' cars, we build our own cars as well. Yeah. We're th we are through and through petrol heads. Um, Grant's finishing up that Alpha One Six Four of his the exhaust and that stuff. Um, car should be ready for start up in the next week or so. So hopefully no issues there. Obviously we built the motor. We've done a the interior on the car came out beautiful, um, tan leather interior. The seats in that Alpha, are just a beautiful design, came out really nice. Um, and then, yeah, so that car was resprayed. So it's a kind of a partial restoration, sort of a little toy for Grant. Mm -hmm. uh, he's quite the Italian car fan, so we built that. And then obviously that 350 Franken Z project that's ongoing also stumbled a bit because of the lockdown. But the car's probably, mechanically, it's about... 90% done. Um, I need Grant's help on a couple of things to finalize things. And then we've got the ECU, so it's wiring and that stuff. And then a few odds and sods. We've got to fit the, the carbon wing and do a front splitter and that type of stuff. Cars get, that car is going to be really special when it's done. Uh, very proud of that, that build. Um, <clears throat> obviously, actually, the first build that I've done kind of completely on my own to that level. So total stripped down. Obviously, that car was involved in the flood. So total strip down and rebuild. Um, very excited to get that car back on track and see what it's going to be capable of. So yeah, uh, lots going on. Very fortunate, as I say. I mean, you see the you see the scary Facebook posts and messages from guys, businesses closing down and people being laid off. So I mean, I just I, I can't say thank you enough to our clients and and new clients that are engaging with us and bringing us business. We are very very fortunate to to be in such a strong position, well, strong position. I mean, considering the market and the, yeah. and the economy, it's, yeah. we're, we're, we're doing exceptionally well. So very, very grateful for that. No, oh, that's, that's brilliant. But I mean, you, you guys have the track record. Let's go with this. You know, that's, that's the thing that's going to kick in. Um, I think at the moment, it's, it's going to be hard for a bunch of guys 
especially new shops coming in because people are going to really start checking where they put their money. They're going to look for shops that's got the track record, that's done the work, um, that's been there, done, been there, done that, still going, instead of putting their, especially on their bigger bills, instead of putting them with their money and stuff in these new shops, which is a little bit shaky at the moment. You know, because the last yeah. thing you want to do is put your project into a shop and then the shop goes down. Um, yeah, no, for sure. So, but um, but between all of this, so you guys have these millions of projects, and then you guys build a simulator at the same time. Yeah. How did that come? Um, obviously, Grant has obviously been uh, into racing his entire life from when he was a lighty. So obviously now with the um, with the lockdown and everything, the, the motorsport fraternity has turned to the sim racing in a massive way. Yeah. So it's something that Grant had on his mind for quite a while now, probably more than a year. And it's something that I've wanted to, we've spoken about me wanting a sim rig to start racing online. And just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a big computer gamer. I used to play games when I was a lighty, but always enjoyed the odd driving game and stuff and, and wanted to try out the sim racing and just see what it's all about. And I actually looked at a sim rig from another company and I sent it to Grant and I said, check this out. What do you think? You know, is it cool? Should I maybe look at saving up and getting one? And he's like, oh, no, don't worry. I'm already building one. So that was a bit of a surprise to me. So um, that was actually nice. Grant actually gave it to me for my birthday, which was in May. So that was a nice surprise. So I've set mine up. Unfortunately, we, we've been so busy, I haven't had much time for racing. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I suppose it just goes, you know, people who drive the car, you know, obviously Grant's been driving cars and racing cars and building cars. It kind of goes the fact that we should build a rig. So that's come along quite nicely. What's cool about the rig is it's very simple, but also it's quite, especially, obviously we can put a GT seat in it, which is more of a saloon car racing seat, or we can put like, I've got actually one of our Marinello seats in it. Um, and it's kind of cool because the Marinello seat, we've got it, it, you sit quite low in the rig and it makes it very immersive. It's in kind of driving, you sit in the rig and it, it feels, and the way I've, you know, way, way the screen mounts and where this, where the steering wheel sits, it almost blocks just your lower part of the of the uh, the screen. So it's it's very immersive. It's almost like sitting in my Z3. So about our design. Obviously, there's a lot of other guys doing it, building rigs out there, which are also very. Um, so yeah, it's quite a competitive market at the moment. But we thought we'd add our spin on it and put something out there. And we've sold quite a couple. They are, if anyone's interested, they are on display at one of our park ATS motors out there in the industry. So anyone who's interested can contact us or go ATS motors. They've actually got the units on display. So yeah, that was just something different to dabble in. And you know, you've got to keep the, you've got to keep your options up at the moment. You know, if one side of the business starts to slow down a little bit, maybe, you know, we also, we try and be mild. I mean, our, our builds are expensive. We, we don't, we're not, uh, we don't hide that fact. You know, it, it takes a lot of time and money and effort uh, to build the kind of car. Um, obviously, we try and make them as reasonable as possible for customers. But in the current situation, we're trying to work with our customers and say, you know, do you have the budget to continue the project? Do you want to slow it down, cap the hours? So everyone's the understanding of level without overload. We want to just keep things open and make sure that we can keep the cash flow going. And obviously, the focus is to keep the business going. So, yeah. And that was one of the reasons why when, when I started with, with my ride, why I approached you guys. Like, you guys had the track record. After I saw that, what's it, the three to five that you guys did and the quality of the yes. building and stuff. That's, you guys, were just, it was just a no-brainer. Um, and then oh, I saw the photos, uh, then I saw the photos come through of the white body. And that, that was another big thing. Um, I believe that you, you put your project with guys that had, like you said, has a track record in that. And I mean, it, the C25 or the, that car was completely out of my comfort zone. I mean, mm. it wasn't something from the 30s or 40s. So, and I'm, I'm learning a lot from you guys uh, with, with this project. I actually forgot about one other project that we're busy okay. with, just to touch on quickly, is um, we're doing another 325. We seem to be. I don't want to call it the E30 specialist because um, I mean there's always people who are we, we're getting there. So um, we're actually doing another 325 that came from the coast 
uh, car was in quite or in rough condition, a lot of rust and stuff. Um, bit of a tricky project for us because the customer's gone on a bit of a budget. Uh, he's been very accommodating though. As we found issues though, he's um, expanded his budget and he, he's working with us um, like we do with all our customers. Mm. Uh, we work closely with them and inform them of what's going on and keep them up to date. So that caused um, also a partial restoration. We've had to do a fair bit of mechanical cleanup and stuff. The interior was very bad. Uh, a lot of rust repair. So it's coming it along nicely. We're, was it worse than the, the, the win my right car? Yeah, the rust is pretty bad, eh? Yeah, quite a lot of rust, both floor panels, um, the sill, the firewall. So we've had to do quite a lot of um, kind of neat patch up work and try and get it back. But we're confident that we've got it back. Got some cool things going on the car, brakes and wheels that one of our suppliers bought for a car of his years and years ago. I think, what is there? was stamped like his sticker was on them from when he bought them from like 04 or something. But they look they look really tough. So we've got a really nice Alcantara and upper leather interior going into the car. Um, nice sound system planned for it as well. So I think it's going to be a nice, um, another one that's just sort of not standard, but not over the top either. Nice running, driving, enjoyable Sunday driver for the customer to go out and have some fun in and enjoy the car. Mm. So um, yeah, quite excited to get that one finished as well. I think it's going to be cool. Well, I, I've, I've been talking to the guys because, I mean, obviously we, 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 we want to get this, this BM finished now for, for Win My Ride so we can get this, give this away to, to some person. And we, we've been like hang, thinking about well, what's next? What's going to be the next build, you know, for, for Win My Ride? Yeah. And uh, I was talking to the guys from Zero EV in the UK. They are the guys that do electric cars or electric yeah. conversions. And I, I just have this feeling of maybe doing like a bay window, electric bay window bus or something. Well, that, that would be epic. What do, you, what do you think? Do you think maybe as oh, a, a big giveaway, do a good do an electric car? It would be really exciting, obviously, for also to showcase that and document the process and see what's involved in it. We Grant actually done a lot of research on that wanted to to uh, to do something like that. We've obviously never had the the time or the the opportunity to. We had one customer who was very keen on um, that. Funny enough, we bought an E30, uh, built E34. He was very keen on EV E30. Yeah. Um, but. Um, He's got he's got a nice car collection and um, as yet obviously we we haven't got around to that but I'm pretty sure it's still on the cards. Yeah, I think EV and especially in a bay window bus, uh, I think that would be awesome. Kind of uh, you know a bit of a different spin because you've got a vehicle from the from the era of no such EV or anything and then you put an yeah. EV in it. You know the the whole surfer sort of look. But it's but it's electric, so yeah, I think it would be awesome. It's something it's a, pretty cool. It kind of ticks all the boxes, I think. You know, for for as as the next project. So I'll I'll, I'll get the guys from OLE and you know and twist their arms to go. This this is the route we should go for for the next one. So where are we standing? So with my right, what what what's our next? What's the next step on your side for with my right? I know I need to get my ass to Joburg so we can go see this. You know? <laughs> No, for sure. We always like to have a visit from you, Joe. Um, so uh, basically what we need to do, we need to get the engine bay tied up and sprayed. The motor can go in and there were a few issues in the engine bay we weren't happy with, the actual metal work. We need to get that. We did start prepping and cleaning and everything, so it's just a case of a coat of paint. Um, and then motor can go in. Um, we need to sort out suspension. Obviously, we need to just make a decision whether we are going coil over or air ride. We're hoping for the air ride. Obviously, going to be really cool to have the wide body and be able to slam it. Uh, so yeah, we need to source a few parts for the for the suspension setup, and then maybe we should sort ask, that out. Maybe we should ask out there if there's anyone watching this. If you know of a, of a decent air ride kit for uh, the E30, let us let us know. We we're looking for a proper yeah. a proper bolt on. E30 kit, not one of these customized blow up. Um, I, I want to say Chinese bad, bad things with the bad piping. 
Uh, we want a proper system that goes into it. I mean, this is a proper car we're building. If someone can give us a call, yeah, let, let us know. If, if it's up there. So once suspension and stuff has been done, uh, I know we've got that something special coming on the wheels. Um, uh, what that the guys are doing. I think uh, Nelson will probably be on the show in the next week or so. We're going to be talking about the one-off wheels that we're building for this thing. Um, I'm speaking to Brett so we can get the is a nice sound system, not over the top, but there's a nice, nice sound system still going into it. No, I think the focus is really just to try and get the car a complete rolling chassis, so engine in, gearbox in, sorted out, gearbox mount, mm -hmm. in, engine bay done. Get the suspension sorted out, whichever way we're going to go with coilovers or air rider. Either will be cool. I mean, obviously the air ride is next level, but either will be cool. Get the brakes set out. Uh, you were talking about wood and some other partners that are potentially coming on board. If it is, yeah. will we, we've got all the ability to machine the necessary adapters and everything to get the brakes set out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think to get the car to able to be on its wheels, roll around, then we can start looking at paint work and kit fitment and all of that stuff so that we can get the car to paint as soon as possible. Exactly, because I mean, what what we are planning now is once the car is done, the car is actually going to travel the country a little bit so everyone can see it. Um, so we, we're going to be putting that car into shopping malls all over the country. Uh, under, if I understand correctly, you there will be posters up in uh, stores all over the country soon to win my ride. This is really going to be one of the most iconic cars um, in the country and probably one of the most like, best known cars um, to be given away. Uh, dude, and thank you so much for working with me on this project, man. I know no, it's we editing. appreciate it. <laughs> oh, you know, building cars is, you know what they say, build cars, they said, it will be fun, they said. <laughs> you know what, B business is difficult, business is tricky, it's been worse by the lockdown and the pandemic. Oh. We just do the best we can, we just do the best we can. Dude, at the moment, uh, it's just... It's it's very hard because you constantly have this conversation with people where the I hate the words, but it's this new law, you know. Everyone's going, Yeah, mm. but this was said and you're like, Yeah, but the whole world's changed. That, yeah, yeah. So yeah. much so much has changed. I mean, we we sitting on the magazine. I'm I'm uh, it looks like I will have a magazine on the shelf in August. Um, okay, cool. So we, I'm working on that now. We are busy finalizing everything on our side, but how it comes out is going to be completely different. And we've got guys that's going to be upset because the local shops aren't going to have it. But you know, we we have to change everything just yeah. so we can get a product out again. Yeah, you got to adapt. It's the only way. It's adapt or die. Otherwise, exactly. You know, we've got. Exactly. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I think that the world, this epidemic has given us all five phones. Fit in or fuck off. You know? <laughs> that's the way it is. Yep, that's pretty much it. You've got to <laughs> just make it work. Yeah. Whichever exactly. way you do, you've got to make it work. Exactly. Yeah. I, I know I'm keeping you from your office and from the workshop. You've got a beer to build. So uh, thank you so much for being on the show, man. All right. Thanks, Joe. We really appreciate I'll, the opportunity. I'll, I'll see you in a, in a week or two. All right. Okay, cool, bro. Thanks, Cheers. man. Bye. Peace. Cheers. Bye.